that name, amen? Don't, Don't we, we just, just love, love to hear Jesus, 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 Yeshua, Yeshua, Yeshua. What a beautiful name that we have the privilege of shouting out, calling upon, believing in, and just to worship is Jesus. It's, it's all, all about, about Jesus, Jesus, amen? Amen. amen. What, what, what a great, great time, time to come, come here. We'll, we'll pray, pray for the people that could not make it today because of sports. Charles, Charles got called, called, called into work. work. We'll, we'll pray, pray for, for him. him. So, so he's, he's heading, heading down, down to San Louis. Louis. We'll, we'll pray, pray for Kat and her, her friend that she's ministering to now. We pray that will be resolved because, because of the name of Jesus. Jesus. He, he is powerful. powerful. One, One of the, the verses, verses that I love a lot is Romans 5.8. It says, he, he commended his love towards us and while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't look down upon us to see us being clean. He didn't look down upon us to say, hey, look, they got to get better. They got to work for this. He says, I just love them as they are and I will cleanse them. With, with my blood. blood. What, what a beautiful, beautiful thing we serve a mighty God. God. And, uh, you know, if, if we, we can, can just leave here today knowing that, hey, we serve a mighty God. God. And he, he still loves us no matter how we are, how, how we act, or what we do during the week. He still loves us, amen? amen. I'm, I'm thankful, thankful for that. that. Today, today I'm going to talk a little bit about being blessed, blessed or as an encouragement. We are blessed people. We are blessed people. Sometimes we... Talk like, like we're not blessed. blessed. Sometimes, Sometimes we act, act like, like we're not blessed. blessed. But, but overall, we are blessed because we serve a mighty God. We serve a mighty God. God. Turn, Turn to Proverbs chapter 3 as, as I take a drink. drink. Aren't, Aren't you guys, guys happy you're in the house of the Lord? Lord? I mean, I, I, st I like, like what Kim said. said. If, if you, you go a week without her, so you start to starve. And, and, and as, as he spoke, spoke you, you know, it's so true, iron sharpens iron. We, we need to be together as a family because we edify one another. We build one another up. That's, That's how we survive. That's how we make it through this evil world that we're walking through is each other, holding each other, loving each other. Some of the greatest things I've heard people say is love one another as he has loved you. If we, we can, can learn, learn just that, that little simple concept, we would be such more and so closer to God, such better people. Proverbs 3, verse 33 says this. The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked. Remember that. I know I talked about let not your hearts envy sinners last week. Look at this. The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked. But, 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 he blesses. He, he blesses, blesses listen, listen to me, me he, he blesses, blesses the habitation of the just. That, that just means lawful or the righteous man. He blesses them. them. That's, That's a promise of God. God. That's, That's why, why I, I said, said we're blessed, blessed people. people. Proverbs, I mean, Psalms 1 3 says, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season, whose leaves shall not wither. And, and whatsoever, whatsoever he shall do, he, he shall prosper, or he, he should have great success. That's the God that we worship. He, he promises us, we'll be planted by the rivers of water. Our roots will be plenished. We're blessed people. Proverbs 3.34 says, Surely he scorneth the scorners, but he gives grace unto the lowly. The lowly word there means humble or meek. The humble he gives grace to, the meek. Or meekness. Remember it says in Peter, God resists the proud, but he loves the what? The humble. Look at verse 35. The wise shall inherit glory. That word glory there means honor. The wise shall inherit glory, honor. But shame shall be the promotion of fools. Man, we are the righteous. We are right because we're in right standing with God. His righteousness covers us. We, we are blessed, blessed people, and, and we, we should start, start walking today as blessed people. people. You, you should, should have, have that confidence of who you are in Christ. 
We, we should, should walk, walk around, around like that. that. I, I am the son of the king of kings and the lord of the lords. I'm the son of the almighty God, the everlasting father. I am his son. He has called me to be part of his heir. Hallelujah. Why do we not walk like that sometimes? Why are we so depressed and oppressed and beat down and knocked down and woe is unto me? The other day, I heard someone wanted to talk about someone, and I said, let's just pray for them. I'm not here to talk and gossip about people. We're here to uplift each other. We can learn to uplift each other would be a lot better. The issue of the righteous and the unrighteousness are here very broadly stated. These verses indicated to us the long and large results of the wisdom on the one hand and of folly, of folly on, on the other. To whom God, God gives grace, and to these he gives glory, which is Jesus. Yahshua. Yeah. That's, That's who he gives us. He gave, gave us his son. I like to ask, what are you doing with the son today? Are you living for him? Is he really in part of your life? That impartation of what he has given us, his spirit, his love, his wisdom, his knowledge, his understanding, who he is, he's given us, not just by his word alone, but by how he just speaks to us, how he treats us. I don't want to just put this aside. This is his written word for us, to learn of him, to learn. It's our instructions before we leave this earth, right? It's the Holy Scriptures. Jesus did mention that. Didn't he, he say that you err because, because you don't know the scriptures? We need to know the scriptures. But we have a, not a relationship with this book. We have a relationship with the living God. Jesus the Christ. The Messiah. That's who we have a relationship with. The whole Godhead. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We have a relationship. Not a religion. Not a denomination. We are in one with him because he has pulled us in there by his blood. He's by us. Amen? Those whom God favors. Aren't you glad you're favored of the Most High? We say woes to me because I messed up, but you are favored. Or he wouldn't have sent his son. You are favored. There are three things that characterize this. We're here. They are called the just, the spirit of alertness, the just. Do that which is right towards their fellows to act honestly, fairly, and considerably. That's what we're called to do when we act like that. Number two, the lowly, the spirit of humility. Number three, the wise, the spirit of wisdom. They are in, they are in the attitude of inquiring towards God Knowing his truth and doing, doing his will and only his will are we to do. It's, it's his will be done, done not thy will. Our will gets into too, too much called the flesh. Remember, our flesh is contrary with the spirit. In Galatians, doesn't it say, do not be deceived, for God will not be mocked. If you, you sow to the flesh, you will reap the flesh. See, See that's, that's when he goes to say, if you sow to the flesh, of the flesh, you will reap corruption. But, but if you sow to the spirit, of the spirit, you will really reap everlasting life. That's why we're to sow to the spirit. We need to stop eating the flesh. I wish it was easier as I just said it. Because it's, it's a war, war. amen? It's, it's a battle. battle. He, he blesses, blesses the habitation of the just. How many of you enjoy just, just hearing that? that? Instead, Instead of saying, woe unto, unto me, he blesses your habitation. Your, habitation. your home either has, has peace or it don't. don't. See, the old, old saying, money can buy a house, but it cannot buy a home. It can buy a bed, but it cannot buy sleep. Just think about that. A home, a home is where you bring God within to it, it and then the peace of God is in there. And he resides within your habitation. He blesses it. 
Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Let's, Let's turn, turn to Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter, chapter 28. I will finish these verses later, but I'm going to talk a little bit about this before we get into Deuteronomy. There's a whole blessing here, but I just want to start with this verse before we read some of his blessings to the children. I use the Old Testament as well as the New Testament, so everybody knows. There's the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, which is all Jesus Christ. It's all instruction for us, amen? It all gives us wisdom. I always, always tell people, then why did God give us two-thirds of the Old Testament and only one of the New? Twice as much to read. Twice as much to learn. Anyways, in verse 2 it says this. And all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake thee. How many want some blessings to be overtaking you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Overtake thee if thou shalt what? Hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Yahuwah Elohim. The Lord thy God. When God speaks, men must hearken to the words of his mouth. He who does not hearken will not obey. He that listens to God will obey God. He that listens not to God will not obey God. Did you hear that? In Hebrews 3, 7, it says this. Hebrews 3, 7. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost has said, today, if you will hear his voice, the voice of Jesus, if you will hear, if you will hear, in the case you are willing to hearken to God, listen now and do not defer it to the future period. There is much in the willingness to hear the voice of God. Today, if you hear his voice, act upon that. Today is a new day. If you hear his word through the preaching, through however he's speaking to you, Obey his voice and these blessings will be upon you and he'll bless your habitation. His voice. His voice. One might ask, how is the voice of God speaking to us? Number one, in his written word. Did you hear me? Number two, in the preached gospel. Now I'm talking about the truth that is preached because of the gospel. Not, Not the watered-down water gospel, gospel, but I'm, I'm talking, talking the unconditional, uncompromised gospel. Preaching it in the pureness, in the clarity of it as it is with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Number three, he speaks to you in your own conscience, in your own heart. We've all had that where the Lord says, don't do that, or go ahead and do this. Please go over there. Please come here. I'm just loving you today. We, we all have heard the voice within our own conscience. And I'm not talking about an audible voice, but we know the Holy Spirit is speaking to us because he's our comforter. He's leading us. He's guiding us. Isn't that beautiful? beautiful? Number four, in the event of his providence, or one would say, God conceived as the power sustaining and guiding human destiny. He's, he's, he's guiding us. us. He's, he's leading, leading us to our destiny. destiny. Sometimes, Sometimes we trip and fall on our path. Sometimes, Sometimes we go a little bit to the left. left. Okay, okay I, I, I will rephrase, rephrase that. that. Most, Most of the, of the time, time we go, go to, to the left, left and, and he, he gets, gets us right, right back onto the path. path. But God, God never gives up on us. I was thinking about the other day the prodigal son. And I'm not preaching on the prodigal son today. I have done it. Maybe, Maybe I should, I should do, it do it again, but, but I was just thinking about how that father's love. When, when he, he come back, back, the father never questioned what he was doing. Never reprimanded him. He loved him. Covered him. Gave him a ring. Filled with that cap for him. And he was so blessed because what was lost was found. What was blind now sees. The father was so happy to see the son come back to him. He wasn't talked and never did was spoken about what he was in and what the things he's done. See, we want to think about the things he's done and what he did. But the father's looking at it about you just coming back to me with all your heart. When you reach your senses, sometimes we do come back to the father. That's why we don't need that spirit of apathy and just get kind of, ah, it's the same old, same old. No, every day is a new day, Jesus. Every time you open up is a new time, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Bless, Bless you, brother. How you, How you doing, doing girl? girl? 
Number five. five. It's, it's in, in his, his moral, moral teachings. teachings. The admonition. Oh, it's in his moral teachings. I'll say that. Of our relate, our, uh, sorry, sorry, in our relatives and our friends. He teaches us through our friends. He teaches us in church. Why do you think iron sharpens iron? Why do you think we uphold each other? Because God uses people to edify each one another. He uses you in my life. It might be a word. It might just be a hug. It might just be some love. It might just be a simple handshake. It might just say, hey, you know what? I got scripture for you. And just, just hand a piece of paper, paper with the scripture and said, the Lord said to give it to you. It was in my heart. heart. Every, Every way God, God can speak to you, he will speak to you. you. Did you hear me? Whatever, Whatever conveys to us the truth of God or is adapted, adapted to impress that upon us may be or may be regarded as his voice speaking to us. He does speak speaks to us every day in some of these ways. And every day, therefore, he may entreat us not to heart, harden our hearts. Let's not harden our hearts. We have been through a lot within our walk with Christ. We have, some of us have gone through different bodies. We have gone through church breaks up. We have seen things we ought not see within the realm of Christianity. But lack not that heart in your heart. Sometimes we have suffered. Sometimes we feel like we're in the middle of the sea with the great winds, with the great turmoils, with the great waves. But lack that not heart in your heart. No matter what you have faced, keep your heart softened with Christ so you can hide his word deep in there. When you harden your heart, the word can only bounce off of it. You, you can, can read Mark 4.4, 4, 4, he talks, talks about that, how the seed falls upon the stony heart. heart. They, they never take ground. They, they never go anywhere. Matter, Matter of fact, if you keep reading that, it, it says the fowls of the air see it, and they come down and they grab it, and they take it away before it penetrates your heart, and it actually tells you something. You allow the enemy to take away the truth before you allow it to get within your heart. And, and that's, that's what, what happens. happens. We, we come, come to church, we don't like something, we said something, we're having a bad day, and we don't, don't allow God to speak to our heart because it's hardened. Soften your heart, beloved. Soften your heart when you come to the house of God. And let him speak to you. No matter what you're going through, what you're doing, let God speak to you. Because he's the one that heals you. He's the one that forgives you. Amen? Amen? <laughs> okay. In Matthew chapter 15, verse 10, it says this. And he called the multitude. And he called the multitude. You take a drink. And he called the multitude. Let's turn there. I want to turn there. Let's go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 15. If you have your sword with you, if not, there's one in front. If not, just listen. But Matthew, Matthew chapter 15. And we're, we're just, just going, going to read, read well, right, right now I'm going to read verse 2, but we're going to read this thing here. Verse, verse 2 says, I'm sorry, I don't want to read verse 10. I'm going to read verse 10 first. It says, And he called the multitude, and he said unto them, Hear and understand. Hear and understand. Listen. Listen to me. Understand is what he's telling them. Hear me. Understand. I just want you to hear that part. Hear and understand. A most important command here. Make it a point of consciousness to attend to the ministry of the word. Understand. Be not satisfied with attending place of public worship merely. See that the teachings of be of God and that you lay it in your heart. Make sure the teachings, whatever you listen to, is of God. Make sure it lines up with his word. And if it doesn't line up with his word, run. Shut it off, turn it off, and don't say, well, that's the way I'm part of. No, if it doesn't line up with his word, I have nothing to do with it. But he, but he says, says hear and understand. I love that he calls the multitude. Let's, Let's go, go back, back to verse 1 and let's just read a little bit of this. this. Why, Why he called them? Jesus rebukes the scribes and the Pharisees is what he's doing here. Verse, verse 1 says, then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees which were 
of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the traditions of the elders? You know they didn't say the traditions of God. Did you catch that? Not the tradition of the pastor, tradition of the denomination, the tradition of the church. He says, Why? That's how they're asking. For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. I, 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 I want to almost part there and say this. this. Why are they, are they so upset about something that don't mean nothing? We, we just, just want, want to evaluate, evaluate people and get so mad at little things. things. Well, they didn't wash their hands. hands. Why? There's, There's a, bigger a bigger picture, picture here. here. Let's, Let's go, go on. on. Verse 3. But, but he, he answered, answered and said unto them, them why, why do you also transgress the commandments of God by your traditions? Wow. Jesus, Jesus said, said, you're talking, talking about, about the elders. elders. I'm, I'm telling you why you do it against, against God. God. In your, your traditions. traditions. Just spoke plainly. It's, it's your traditions. traditions. Your transgression against God. God. Transgression, transgression is sin. Transgression, transgression is against law of God. God. Not, not obeying is not obedience. Is not obedience. And, and he's, he's telling flat out, why do you do it? it? Let's, Let's go to go verse, verse 4. four. For, For God commanded sin, honor thy father and mother. And, and he that, that curses, curses his father or mother, mother let, it, let him die to the death. death. But, but you say, whosoever shall say to his father or mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be prophet of me, and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Listen to that. They changed the commandments. Do we have that problem today in some churches? They changed it. He's twisting the words. Look, you have made the commandments of God none of effect by your own traditions. Come against, against the traditions. You hear me preach against the tradition of men. Of all the bylaws that we put on ourselves that has nothing to do with the word of God. We need the word of God to guide us. This, this body needs the word of God to, to guide us. Not putting traditions on us that's against his commandments. If it's his commandments, then we keep them. But not to put something on us that we don't keep the whole time. Do you understand what I'm saying? Look at, look, look what he what calls, calls them. them. You, you hypocrites. hypocrites. Well, well did Isaiah, Isaiah say he prophesied of you. These, These people, people draw nigh unto me with their mouth, mouth but they, they honor me. They honor me with their lips, but, but their, their heart, heart is far from me. Praise God. God. My heart's way over there. Hallelujah. My heart's way over there. Oh, God is good. My heart's, My heart's way over there. there. That's, That's what Jesus is saying. You're putting, you're putting all these traditions, traditions you're saying this, and you're acting, acting like you're the most holy people, but your heart is far from God, you hypocrites. Hypocrisy is where you live. You hide under the mask of what you think people will see you as, but inside you are just a grave, a whitewashed one at that. Let's, Let's go, go to verse, verse 9. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Ooh, there's a preaching within itself. Verse 10. And he called the multitude and said unto him, Hear and understand. Now you know why I'm using that. Now look at verse 11. Not that which goes into the mouth defiles a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth. This defiles a man. He's talking to the Pharisees in the whole crowd. They're so worried about washing hands, I have to do a teaching on washing hands. So he's telling them, it's not what goes in the mouth that defiles you. It's what comes out of the mouth that defiles you. What comes out is words. What went in, food. Do you see what he's saying here? Look at this, verse 12. Then, then came, came his disciples and said unto him, him Knowest thou that, that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? Verse 13. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted shall be rooted up. Boy, that stopped a lot right there, didn't it? That's strong words. Will be rooted up. That's, That's why, why it wasn't, wasn't offended them. them. It, was it was the truth that offended them. them. It, it wasn't, wasn't the man that spoke it, which is the truth. It was that, that he hit the, the nail, nail, the hammer on the top of that nail perfectly. That's, That's why, why it offended, offended them, because, because they, they knew that, that they were living in a lie. Go, Go verse 14. 14. Let, Let them alone. alone. 
They be blind leaders of the blind. Can you imagine a blind person leading the blind? They wouldn't get very far, or they would hit things. And I'm not trying to cut down blind people. I'm just saying if you try to picture it and there's a ditch in front of them, guess where both of them going to end up in? The ditch. And if the blind leads the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Jesus faced it. Then answer Peter and said, Lord, 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 check this out. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. Look at Jesus' word to him. And Jesus said, Are you also without understanding? Didn't I tell you to hear, to understand what I'm saying? And then it goes to his own disciples. It says, Are you yet without understanding? Listen to my word. You've been with me. You're living with me. Listen to what I have to say. I feel like that with a pastor sometimes. You speak and you speak and nobody's hearing what God is saying to them because you're using this word. This is the same thing Jesus is saying to his apostles. I'll get, read that again. And Jesus said, are you also yet without understanding? Do not, verse 17, do you not yet understand that whatsoever enters into the mouth goes into the belly and it is cast into the draw? But those which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart and they defile a man. From out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornication, theft, false witnesses, blasphemy. These are the things which defile a man, but to, to eat with unwashed hands defiles not a man. Do you, you think, think he, he kind of reprimanded them right there? See, he, he wanted, wanted the apostles to get off of the men's traditions. traditions. He, he wanted, wanted the, the, at, at that time the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the, law, 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 the lawyers and all that that's around him. him. Get, Get off of your traditions. traditions. I am here. Focus, Focus on me, and I will teach you the truth. truth. That's, That's what Jesus is telling us today. Get, Get your eyes off of man. man. Get, Get your, your eyes off of traditions. traditions. Get, Get your, your eyes off of them, and, and put, put your, your eyes back, back on me, and, and I will lead you in truth. truth. It's, it's a simple, simple concept, concept, but we, we make, make it so hard. hard. We make it so hard. In Luke eleven twenty eight, it says this. But he, but he said, Yea, brother, brother, blessed are they that hear or understand, that word in the Greek, understand or hear the word of God and keep it. See, we, we, we all hear so much and we listen so much. The problem is, are you keeping his word? Are you hiding it deep within your heart? Are you listening to what he say? Hearken unto him. And he's telling you to obey him. He's speaking to you. Now we have a choice. To, to harden our hearts, walk out here and be the same as we walk in, or we can go out of this door and say, okay, today's a new day, and I'm going to change. That's where we should be. Amen? And the reason that he said this, if you read the verse above, this woman out of the crowd in Luke 11 hollers out, Blessed is the woman that gives birth unto you, in whose breast that you have sucked. Blessed is that woman. And this, and this is what, is what Jesus, Jesus heard when she was trying to bless someone else. else. He goes, yeah, you're missing the, the point, point, lady. Yeah, you're missing the blessing that, that hear the word of God and, and keep it. That's, that's who you should be blessing. Not, not the, the woman, woman that I was, was my mother. mother. He's, He's not, not cutting, cutting his mom, mom down, down here. here. He's, He's trying, trying to redirect, redirect this person back to God. God. See, we need to focus on God in everything we do. We need to focus on Jesus is all. He is all in all. There's nothing else that we need. Outside, outside of Jesus, Jesus the Christ. Christ. He has given, given it to all of us. The thing, thing is, we think we can do it on our own. own. How many of you try to do it on your own? own? I'm going to ask one simple question. How did that work out for you? Not good. It never <laughs> does, does it? To hear the word of God, meaning either himself, the eternal logos, so, so as, as to embrace, embrace him, to believe on him, to have him form in the heart. Or the gospel preached by him. So as to understand it, to receive it as the ingrafted word. To bring forth fruit. 
and to act in obedience to it, to observe it, to abide in it, to never forsake it. That is to hear God's word. That's who we're to be within him. We can't justify our sins by changing God's word. We need to change this to his word. And his word I'm talking about is the living word, Jesus Christ. Remember, in the beginning, God said, His thoughts, he said it, and his word. Think about that. That word became flesh. In Romans 10, 17, it says, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by what? The word of God. We get more faith, more we hear. That's why I tell people they need to be in fellowship. We need to take time away and set this time to come to hear God's word. That's how you get more faith. How many of you want more faith today? I know we all do. Every hand's up. I want more faith because without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without it, you can't please him. That's one of the fruit of the Spirit. How many of you know that's one of the fruit of the Spirit? It's the facet of love. Remember, we always say love, peace, and joy. Then go on, on suffering, meekness, goodness. You know what's after goodness? Faith. That is the fruit of the Spirit. When you have the fruit of the Spirit, you have faith. Because without faith, it's impossible to please Him. He gives each one of you a measure of faith, it says in Romans. Each one of you have a measure of it. If a mustard seed can remove a mountain, I'll take that mustard seed. That's, That's the, the faith, faith that I want. I want, I want the, the faith, faith that God will give me to believe what he says is true. I want, I want the faith to walk this life the way he wants me to walk this life. life. I, want I want the faith, faith to know no matter what I feel, how I feel, how I feel what, what I see, where I go, that God is in control. And I guarantee, I guarantee you 90% of, of our life we're not giving God in control. control. We worry about so much. Worrying never helps us. Jesus got on to them. It will not change your height. You can't, you can't turn, turn your hair, hair black to gray or gray to black. black. Age will do that. You, you can't, can't do anything unless you color it. it. But physically, you, you cannot, cannot do anything. anything. Then, then why, why worry about, about it? it? Has, Has worry changed, changed anything? anything? Yes, yes, your, your health. health. That's, That's all, all it changes. changes. But, but it, it cannot, cannot change the circumstance. circumstance. Only, Only God, God can do that. that. Matthew 13, 9 says... Who has ears to hear, let him hear. Who has ears to hear, let him hear. He's telling that whole multitude, who has ears, please hear. Understand what I'm about to tell you. In John 10, 27, it says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and what? They follow me. My sheep hear my voice. He was just speaking to that Matthew. Leave him alone. Will you offend him? Leave him alone. They're going to be uprooted. They're, They're not part. part. We, we don't, don't like to hear that. that. There are goats today. People, People don't, don't want to hear, hear that, especially some of the Calvinism or the Armenians. Whatever camp, camp you want to jump in, I jump in Jesus' camp. camp. I, don't I don't label, label myself after a man. man. I label I myself after, after the man, man. The man, man, Jesus the Christ. Let's get back to where we're supposed to be in a relationship with him, not some doctrine of men. Jesus just rebuked all of them and us through his word. Amen. James 1, 9, James 1 verse 19 says, Wherefore, my beloved brother, let every man be swift to hear. Slow to speak and slow to wrath. This is a verse, underline it, memorize it, and it will help you that God gave you two ears and one mouth. Why? You're supposed, You're supposed to, to hear, hear twice, twice as much as you speak. speak. And, and you, you do it without doubting, and you, and you do it without wrath. wrath. We need to hear. Why? Because my sheep hear my voice. If, if you're chattering and speaking and being boastful and stuff, how do you hear the word? If you're all puffed up, you can't hear his voice. He says, my sheep hear my voice. I'm thankful I'm his sheep. I'm not the alpha sheep. I'm not the under sheep. I am just his sheep. And I'll, and I'll take, take that. that. As David said, and even if I was a doorkeeper in the, you know, in heaven, heaven whew, I'll, I'll be happy, happy with that. that. 
long, long as, as I get into, into that place, place I'm going to be happy. happy. Well, well, we, we are, are going to that place because we put our trust in Jesus. Jesus. Amen? Revelation 1, 3 says this. We're going to go, go to these blessed blessed now. Blessed is he that readeth. Read so guess, guess what, what you've got to start, start doing more if you want to be blessed. blessed. Read. And, and they, they that, that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for a time is at hand. hand. Read. Keep, keep what, what you hear. hear. Revelation 13, 9. If, if, any, man ha ha if any man has an ear, let him hear. Now, now we're going to go, go back, back to Deuteronomy. The, the blessings. blessings. We're going to go, go back there. Because I want to read some of these blessings before we close this day. I know we got communion. It says this. In Deuteronomy 28, verse 3, it says, Blessed shall thou be in thy city, and blessed shall thou be in thy field. Verse 4. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, hallelujah, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, the flock of thy sheep. Verse 5, blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Your storehouse shall be full. Blessed shall be thou, blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. David wrote that in Psalm 121, verse 8. The Lord shall preserve the going out and thy coming in from this time forth and forevermore. That's Psalms 121, verse 8. He blesses your going out and your blessing coming in. When you go out to work, he will bless you. When you come back home, he will bless you. When you come in the house of God, he will bless you. When you leave the house of God, he will bless you. He will bless you when you obey his word and his commandments. Verse 7, the Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten. Hallelujah. Before thy face, they shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Verse 8, the Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in the storehouses and in, the, and in all thou settest thy hand unto thee. And thou, and thou shalt bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God hath given thee. I guarantee if you look at your life, I've been blessed at my job. I'm blessed with my wife and I'm blessed with my family. The things that I do, I'm a blessed man because of him. Only time I'm not is because of me. Just think about that. Okay, let's get to verse Nine. Nine. The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself, and shall have sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep thy commandments, O Lord thy God, and walk in his way. You have an ear. Hear what the Lord has to say. Hear. Verse 10. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by my name of the Lord, or Yahuwah. And they shall be afraid of thee. You walk, walk in power. power. Verse, Verse 11, and the Lord shall make thee plentiness in goods, in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto the fathers to give unto thee. Verse 12, the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasures, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his seasons, and to bless all the work of thy hand. And thou shalt lead unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. Verse 13, and the Lord shall make thee the head, not the tail. Hallelujah. Remember that you are his sons and daughters, you are the head, you're never the tail. Start walking like it, amen? And you shall be above, and thou shalt be above only. And thou, thou shalt not be beneath. If, if thou shalt hearken unto the commandments, commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, to observe and to do them. Verse 14. And thou shalt not go aside from any other words which I have commanded this day, to the right hand or to the left, to go after other gods and serve them. I want you to hear what he just said. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I have commanded thee. Jesus spoke that to Matthew. You have taken traditions of men and made that the word. 
you were not supposed to go from that left or right. This is my command to rule with you. And you made it in your traditions. Your traditions, not mine. That's what he's calling it. We're coming to a close here in a little bit. Jesus' words at the Beatitude. In other words, be your attitude. Okay? I'm changing. Be your attitude. Here's how it's supposed to be. It will finish with this. Matthew, Matthew chapter, chapter 5, verse 2. two. And, he and he opened his, his mouth and he taught them, saying, I like that. that. Jesus would sit down in front of this great multitude and he opened his mouth and he taught them, saying this. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Verse Matthew chapter 5, verse 3. You there, amen? Okay, verse 4 says, Blessed are they that mourn, they, they shall, shall be comforted. comforted. Blessed, Blessed are the meek. meek. Remember the lowly. They, they shall inherit the earth. earth. Blessed, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. righteousness. They, they shall be filled. filled. If, if you, you feel, feel empty, empty, then search and seek after righteousness. righteousness. Hunger, hunger after it. it. How, How many of you hunger after, after the word of God? God? How, How many of you thirst for it? How many of you get dry up when you don't hear it after a while? How many actually get starving? This, this is, is what he's, he's saying there. Look, Look at verse 7. Blessed, Blessed are the merciful, they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see God. God. Lord, Lord, help my heart to be pure. Amen. Amen. And then, then he goes, Blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see God. Verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Are you making problems out there? Or are you making peace? Verse 10. Blessed are they which persecute the righteousness for the sake of Righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Woo. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you, you shall say, and shall say all manners of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice, 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 and be excited, exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecute they the prophets which were before. We are, we are going to get persecuted. We are going to get bad things said. And we are getting things said to us that are bad. Amen? Amen. But bless are you. I want you to know when we leave here, remember, you are blessed people. I just gave you so many blessings from the Old Testament to the New Testament. And there was only one condition to all those blessings. One. Keep my commandment. And Jesus said, the new commandment that I gave unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. Keep my commandment. If you obey me, all these blessings will be upon you. How many would like to have all those blessings that I read this morning? Let me ask this. How many have all those blessings? If you really look at your life, you are blessed. Amen? Before we close, can I have... Two people, people help, help me with, with that communion. I, I believe, believe this is an opportunity, opportunity time to know how blessed we are to have communion, to, to do in the remembrance of the blood of the Lamb.